Hello booktube, it's Louise the Big Head Bookworm. Lovely to see you, hope you're well, hope you're having a good day today, wherever it is you are and whatever it is you're doing. Hello, welcome to Friday Reads. Today is Friday the 19th of April. We're back, we're back for another Friday Reads. Um, I was hoping to have another video up for you this week. I was hoping that I was going to do either Tuesday Knit Group, but that is going to have to come back on this Tuesday. Had to have a break because of the uh, Easter holidays. Or I was hoping to bring you the third part of my... Oh, I quite fancy reading that. However, I deleted it <laughs> by accident. So I need to do it again. So I'm hoping that this next week coming up, I will have some time and I will sit down and do that for you. So that you can be thinking about all the other books that I quite fancy reading and the books that you quite fancy reading too. So yes, they've been really lovely. I really like the comments on those videos. That'll be... Great, I look forward to doing that. Uh, only one little brief parish notice for today. Um, it does look like they're going to have to postpone the grand opening of the stables. Uh, they had hoped to be able to uh, showcase it to, on Sunday so that the, the village procession out of the church, they probably could have processed to the stables and there would have been a grand opening. However, it does look like with what's been going on there, um, they've still not been able to locate the source, continuing source of the odour um, and they really do apparently need to get that sorted before they can open up. So they're going to have to push it open so that the uh, procession will be through the village and will end up at the parish centre instead. It was lovely seeing so many people there on Sunday, all the different flowers. Thank you so much for that. I did like to see the, the peonies that were there and there was a nice bunch of hyacinths. Beautiful. Um, shame about the chrysanthemums. It really does affect the vicar. So next time, please no chrysanthemums. Oh, I'm having to sit in an odd place because I have Molly here. She is resting today. It's a uh, good Friday here today. So we're all on a go slow for today. And at one point I had a puddle of cats here. So I was kind of perched on this side because of the puddle of cats that's here. It's a glorious laundry day. I stood this morning watching as the two opposite were putting out, he, he and her were together putting out the laundry together. It was a beautiful thing, I have to say. At one point they were doing it side by side as though it was choreographed. And I said to the husband, I said, that's what our marriage is missing. I don't think we've ever done that, tandem laundry. We've never done that. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what that missing thing was. And he said, I'm not sure he feels as strongly about laundry as I do. I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't know what, what gave me that impression this morning when I was stood there watching the neighbours put out the laundry, discussing it with him, gooing over their fluidity together. It was choreographed. It was beautiful. It was really was quite something. No, he didn't get up and have a look. I was quite surprised at that. Just having a little glass of water. So, yes, we've had a nice week. I hope you've had a good week. Um... Bit of a tricky day today, Good Friday. My mum, I was telling Benedict about it, who's now the grand age of 11. We've had his birthday this week. Oh, it's very exciting. Um, that my mum used to hate Good, Fri uh, Good Friday. And I don't know whether something used to happen kind of with church celebrations on Good Friday when she was younger, but she always hated it. So we always had to go out for the entire day uh, because she, she couldn't bear it. And I'm a little similar. I think because of that how I was brought up I always have to go somewhere on Good Friday so we went out and we went to the a nearby village where they have a national trust property there and we went and had, the husband did a picnic it was really lovely so that's that's splendid this afternoon has come down to a little bit of a crunch point <laughs> it's not as jolly as it could be this the Benedict's jolly he's in his room playing his computer games chatting to his friends so he's all fine unfortunately my phone seems to have may have died, may have, we've had to go through a bit of a phone change and it looks like it might not, the master reset may not have reset it in a masterful way, it may have, it may have mean, well, it may mean that I might not have a phone for a while, which is quite exciting in some ways, because of course we're all so reliant on it, so maybe I won't, because I won't be able to look at Instagram, <laughs> uh, apart from on the computer, that uh, perhaps I'll get more reading done. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. It's just things like my audiobooks. 
that's the only thing. It's podcasts and audiobooks. Also getting in contact with people, that's that too is a is a thing. Um but yeah, it's it's I think it's that. But no, it'll be interesting, it'll be fine if it if it's died and I, I need to get a new one, then it's died and I'll get a new one. And we'll just cope with that. So yeah. I just feel for the husband because he's now sat downstairs trying to trying to get it mended and it's just like, oh not on bank holiday. Anyway, what you're not here for that. Oh, but that's also why I've got no theme music because I always use my phone to uh, play the theme music and I have, of course, the phone's died so I have no theme music so sorry about that so you'll have to cope with the old-fashioned me singing. So it's Friday Reads, it's Friday Reads, I'm sat in my bedroom, it's Friday Reads. Here we are, Friday Reads, the video where I tell you about the books that I read this week or listened to this week and any plans I've, I have for reading in the next week or so. So I was reading this, I was listening as an audiobook, um, Agatha Christie's Sad Cypress. What's this book like? I can see. Oh, oh yes. Yes, it's one of my big head bookworm bookmarks. This is my Poirot bookmark. I shall, uh, just while we're here, I'll just show you my other ones that I've got. Agatha. In this most, oh, it's one of my favourites, this. It's the colour, I think. It's beautiful burgundy. And then Miss Marple. Somebody did say they're not that keen on Agatha. Could I do another author? Let's let's just go with this for the time being. We'll see where it goes. So that's my Miss Marple in the blues. So, yes, I'm looking on getting my um, Etsy shop up and running in the next day or two, actually. So I will post, I will somehow do that. Actually, yes, I haven't got a phone. I can't take the photographs. That may flummox that, but we'll maybe do it on the husband's phone, but we will we will get there. I do want to get it up and running because I've got these these beautiful bookmarks that I want to sell. So, so yes. So I shall be showing you pictures of these on Instagram. Please follow me on Instagram if you're interested in that. I am Louise.Stinson, so I shall leave that in the details below. But let's go back to the books. So, yes, I was actually using my Poirot because it is a Poirot, Poirot bookmark. With, in my book. So this is Sad Cypress. Somebody did say, so it'd be really good if you actually mentioned what the uh, books were about. <laughs> I gave a bit of a synopsis. I was like, I laughed and I laughed. I was like, oh, bless. Yes, remember the days I used to tell you what the books were about. No, I guess it did make me think. I don't quite, I don't often do long synopses of the books that I'm either interested in or the one that I read because I don't tend to really study the back of books. I tend to get a vague suggestion what it's about um, and then I go and I don't listen to detailed descriptions of other books. So if there are other booktubers that go into the plots or give you long ideas, I don't want to know. I'm very much like, for example, I've read a thriller this week. So all I knew it was was a thriller. Very vague outline because I don't actually want to be um, spoiled and I have a quite a good understanding of the kind of books that I like and that I'm interested if it's a non-fiction book I'm far more likely to look into it and see whether I'm going to like it otherwise if it's fiction as long as I know the area the rough area of the books the kind of the of what it's about then I will tend to know whether it's going to be my kind of thing or not and I can tell pretty quickly whether I'm going to like it or not so it doesn't bother me so but I do appreciate that in booktube you do actually want to know what books are about so I shall endeavour she says, thinking she probably won't. But I shall endeavour to read, to say a little bit more. So this is a cosy crime by um, Agatha Christie, the queen, the queen of crime herself. It features her Belgian detective, Hercule Poirot. Uh, Eleanor Carlyle stands in the dock, accused of murdering Mary Gerard. The court is packed with people watching and wondering, all convinced of her guilt. The evidence against her is unassailable, but Hercule Poirot is not at all convinced. This is a very slim, um, mid-range, mid yeah, mid-range um, Agatha Christie. It's one of my favourites. I really enjoyed it. I've listened to it and I've read it and I've watched all the adaptations that I can. Um, I think I like it because... Eleanor Carlyle is quite a cool character and whenever I see it played they always play her cool and I quite I find her quite fascinating because of that so I finished listening to my Agatha Christie I should put you up there um and then I uh, fancied a bit of change of pace in what I was reading 
and I don't know if I'd started this last time. I don't think I had, but it was the, it's The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. This is one of the books that my mother-in-law lent slash gave to me. <laughs> she will get it back eventually, probably next year once I've done my, my year's run through of all the books that I've read. Because I keep everything I read that I, you know, I have a physical copy for the year. And then after I've done my run through my video in, in kind of January, February, where I tell you, I show you all the books that I've read in the year. I then winnow through and I, I actually get rid of books at that point. Excuse me. Sparkling water. So this is The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. It is a thriller. Um, uh, think Rear Window, Al Alfred Hitchcock. There are so many allusions to black and white movies in this. And it is somebody with agoraphobia, see something happening, set in New York, modern day, set in the now, and it unfolds from there. So that's all, all you need to know to, to go into it. Um, there are comparisons with The Girl on the Train and the film Rear Window by Alfred Hitchcock. It is that kind of, very much the Alfred Hitchcock one. As I said, there's lots and lots of um, references to it. So, there's two lots, two lots of things I would say about this. The first one is that there is some controversy about the author, A.J. Finn, who is a gentleman and I think it's quite interesting that they chose to call him AJ Finn because quite often if it's a male thriller writer he'll have his name but if it's a female uh, thriller writer or th writer full stop they will sometimes use the initials rather so that men don't feel put off by picking up a thriller or a book written by a woman so I think it's quite interesting that there has been a slight shift in the trends of these kind of runaway successes, like The Girl on the Train, where they, who are female, written by females. So they're kind of, I feel as though HarperCollins are kind of nodding towards that. So I thought that was quite interesting. The other thing about him is there has been some controversy about how he's misspoke. I think. I don't know all the ins and outs, but it seems that he has given interviews and spoken in the press about how he is a cancer survivor and that people in his family have died from cancer and he's been affected by cancer or an, at least a, a kind of terminal illness survivor. And actually it's come out that he hasn't had that and there's been a lot of untruth spoken about and that he's either I think he's more than exaggerated I think it is flat out lied um which has understandably upset an awful lot of people so there's there is some controversy about that it sounds like there's there's an there's been an awful lot going on in his internal landscape and I look to look with him with more sympathy than anything else because it says to me that he was in a quite a desperate place that he was saying these things um so yeah so I, whether or not it was one of those things that snowballed he said it's somebody then it snowballed and snowballed I don't know but I was I probably wouldn't have gone out and bought the book but I was given given it and I thought well I'll have a read of it anyway so it's a thriller and I just fancied a thriller <sighs> I read it really quickly. It was an enjoyable read. I got every twist, every turn. Uh, after about 50 pages, I could have plotted it towards the end. So whether or not that's because I've read a lot of thrillers or just it was well telegraphed, I don't know. So I saw it coming. It was still an enjoyable read. My problem was the main character. Um... She, it's a woman what's her name Anna Fox can't remember her name I only read it three days ago can't remember her name Anna Fox was not convincing in any way shape or form as a character and I feel with thrillers the more you're invested into the main character the more in their plight and peril the more you'll enjoy it and she was not convincing as a character she's not convincing as a woman in any way shape or form there was this this, this weird encounter with her Oh, it, I can't go into it because it would be a bit, a, not a plot spoiler, but it would have, it would surprise you if you knew what it was coming when you read it at the beginning. And it just was so unconvincing. And I do not understand why that was put in. I can't believe an editor didn't go, no, no, bad. Um, but I still enjoyed it. I, I felt that the, 
I found that all the cinema references were too heavy handed. I thought it was wildly implausible and improbable. However, I didn't kind of go into it expecting it to be real life. <laughs> I didn't gritty fiction. So I kind of forgave it all of these flaws for the fact it was a really well written pacey read it was it was well written in the way that it it wanted you wanted to carry on reading and you wanted to you know you were invested in the storyline however daft it was and so I carried on reading it so it's one of those ones that is a throwaway book and you'll you I don't believe anybody's going to take it to heart I find it interesting that they're going to make a movie of this I'm kind of like where is that gonna go um that will be an interesting one. But it was it was fine. So I, I enjoyed it when I was reading it. But then when I put it down, I just all the plot holes and all the kind of... And I think the fact I kind of could have put it down at one point and told you this is what's going to happen was a bit disappointing. But still, I enjoyed it. And I'm wittering on. Um, so, yes. And then I actually picked up another... I picked up another thriller. I was in the mood for thriller. Now, this is an odd one. Nora Roberts, The Witness. The number one bestseller. So Nora Roberts, who is also the author J.D. Robbs, is a prolific, prolific author. And she churns out thrillers and she churns out romances and thrilling romances and romance thrillers and paranormal romances and paranormal paranormal thrillers and crime books and, oh my word, straight up romance. And she is, you know, she's a masterful storyteller. I had tried it. So this is uh, somebody who, uh, Abigail Laurie, has a dark, terrifying secret. Aged 16, she witnessed a shocking mafia murder. Narrowly escaping with her life, she was forced to leave her old identity, even her real name, behind for good. So that gives you an idea. And then it's small town, sheriff. You know, the kind of, the lead cop in the town. So that tells you what it was. There was lots of kind of Nora Roberts ingredients in this, ones that I really liked and the ones that I actually didn't like. So I suddenly I realised that with Nora Roberts there, she had tends to go th with this family setup of one of them has no family and has no friends. And then there's this kind of like big boisterous family where they're really close and they're kind of... Um, they get together and have their meals together and there's this sense of love and, and kind of if you marry me you marry into this clan and they're the people that have got no family are like really glad that they're marrying into this kind of ready-made family it's a really common setup that she uses this kind of abundance of that you're not just marrying me or you're not just in relationship with me you can't you kind of get this all this family this kind of community around you and the kind of the big boisterous family is a very common um setup that she she uses so I saw that one coming I also it was that kind of like that witness protection she's got a secret he's gonna find it out and I was like and the tension between them and I was kind of every time I must have tried to read this about three or four times every time I've got to a certain point I just thought no I'm just I'm not what I feel like I know what's going to happen and I don't know why but it's just not not grabbing me however this time I decided to persevere and I just thought no just read it and if you really get to halfway through and you can't bear it then this, you know this is the time to say goodbye to this book and actually it surprised me it did have all the Nora Roberts setups the um sexual shenanigans between them the source between them was not too spicy I mean it wasn't I mean there's a little bit of something but it wasn't kind of the main thrust of the action shall we say um it did have some but it wasn't it was very much kind of in the background and well yeah i think so and oh, a lot saucier mills and boons than than this and she can get saucy but it's not like that at all and um the kind of the things where you could see where i felt like it was telegraphed that something was going to happen and I kind of was like oh well I know what's going to happen here each time I thought that it would go sideways which was really pleasing down to the denouement I was expecting well I know what's going to happen here and it did and I was so pleased with that that it was a refreshing take on it in every way um and so I was really glad I read it. So it's it's better than I thought it was going to be. That sounds like damning with faint praise. 
what do you think about this book? Well, it's better than I thought. No, it, it, it kind of, it's better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be run of the mill, Nora Roberts. I knew what was going to happen and I didn't. It was better than I thought. And uh, although it did have a lot of the points that I do normally expect, it had enough to keep me going, oh, that I really enjoyed it. So that's Nora Roberts, The Witness. Which has been on my shelf for ages. Another book that has been on my shelf for ages, I know, I have read quite a few this week, is Crimson Bound by Rosamond Hodge. And this is the one that I am currently, currently reading. Let's put a little bookmark in there. I'll choose my little uh, Miss Marple, even though it's not a Miss Marple. I should do one that just says romance or paranormal or something like that um so this is crimson brown abound by rosamond hodge author of cruel beauty i have had this on my bookshelf for i don't know how long it's one of the american floppy editions and as in book two if it's an american floppy edition you do actually have to do this to prove i think and you also have to say i really like them there we go it's very nice um i'm on page 132 out of what? 132 out of, out of what? 44. I don't think so. I think that might be the beginning of the next book. Otherwise that makes no sense. Yes, it is. Hi, Mindy. Uh, 436. So I'm about... Uh, nearly 30%. Nearly 30% in. So yes, that is. So it is... Uh, inspired by the classic fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood, Crimson Bound is an exhilarating tale of darkness, love and redemption. I don't think I've ever read anything based on Little Red Riding Hood. I haven't knowingly read anything. I have read Little Red Riding Hood. I've actually read the Grimm's tales. I think that some of them are based on it. And it actually, it isn't... It's a bit of a dark one, that one. Um, good old grandmother getting eaten and what have you so it is it has got that about it it's very much fantasy a fantasy retelling it's got nothing set in this reality whatsoever so there's a lot to begin with there's a lot of she's blood bound and he's forest born and and i i spent a good 50 pages going oh, what who's what you know, here's a here's there and everywhere I was like, what? but actually now i've kind of left that wash over me and i've we've got into more the the kind of the the meat of the the tail i'm enjoying it more um i can't actually see where this is going there is a bit of a love triangle i think that's developing because the our main lass wearing red there um who is called rachel rachel um is kind of a bodyguard to the an illegitimate king's a king's illegitimate heir who has no hands i know i was like that's not very handy no but he has no hands i thought that's enough that's a that's the one i haven't i haven't come across before in a fancy one i've come across people with that one hand but not having both hands i thought it's quite interesting so he's got and then there's the kind of her kind of boss ish kind of in a fantasy way kind of master of the bloodborne anyway so he kind of so is there a love triangly thing gonna emerge i don't know um but it is all very much fairy tale and fantasy and i'm enjoying it actually i'm enjoying it more than i, I thought i was going to um i picked up three books i had a little wander through my to be read books that i had are downstairs i had a little wander and i picked up three and i gave them to the husband and i say pick my next book and this was the one that he chose so so the husband did good the husband did good with this so yeah i'm really glad that i i mean obviously i it was in my my thoughts to read it um otherwise i wouldn't have picked it up but but yeah no it's good i mean i'm enjoying it so yeah that was it so i finished three books this week and i'm well on the way to well, about a third of the way through that, and I shall finish that in the next day or two, probably quicker if I haven't got my phone. <laughs> Let's be honest. If I haven't got my phone to distract me, there's been a lot more reading. <laughs> so yes, it's going to be interesting with the kind of it's the audio books really. I'm sure I can download them onto my laptop, but yeah, it'll be fine. 
one way or another we will sort it out and I will I will do that so hopefully in the next couple of days I will be able to say on Instagram that the um, my Etsy shop it will be open for bookmarks should you care to buy one and yeah that's what we've got planned we haven't got anything major this this weekend I'm just gonna enjoy the nice weather I think and I hope you are too this has been lovely booktube and I look forward to doing it again